Nonsense. It's never too early to, to celebrate the birth of our Lord. But, Santa, it's still Advent. Of course it is. What better time to be joyful? But, Santa, it's his day. Why, so it is. Oh, 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 oh. Children, would you like to hear a story? Yes. Could you please hand me the book? Thank you. Once upon a time, there lived an orphan named Klaus. He dutifully attended the local Benedictine school, and he was very interested in the lives of the saints. His favorite was St. Nicholas, who protected children and helped ease the burden of poverty in his congregation. He found he could not think of St. Nicholas without thinking of the long-awaited child destined to be the rise and fall of many. Claus knew that each child was a miracle. This child was the miracle of miracles. It had been said that when there was a problem, God sent a child who had all the necessary talents, gifts, and confidence to make the world better. Jesus came so that the world could be reconciled to the Father. Saint Nicholas came to shepherd God's people through difficult times and bring them hope. One night, Claus recited his evening prayers. He began to wonder, What am I sent to do? I am a child of God. The Catechism tells me so. What is God's special purpose for me? As Klaus grew, he noticed the sisters never kept things for themselves. Whenever the parents of the school children or the wealthy patrons of the village gave them gifts, the sisters thanked them and then shared the gifts with others. Sweaters, mittens, and other warm clothing went to poor families in the community. Candies, cookies, and other baked goods were distributed among the orphans. It was their little secret. Any gifts of money were carefully saved for little emergencies. One day, Claus asked the Reverend Mother why this was. She replied, All gifts are from God. It is our responsibility as good stewards to make the best use of these gifts. <laughs> like the talents? Klaus inquired. He remembered that the servant who buried his share of the money, rather than investing it, found himself in a lot of trouble when the master returned. Yes, exactly. God gives us gifts every day. It may be a new child to care for, an envelope of money that will keep our building in good repair and coal in our furnaces, or a box of chocolate with exactly enough for each of the children here. The only difficult part is seeing the value of each gift. Once you know its value, you can send it to its proper place, Reverend Mother explained. If I am a gift, Klaus began, what is my value? She laughed. Beyond price. That is why you are here. You are too wonderful to part with, and God has sent you many brothers and sisters. They too were handpicked by the Lord and they are gifts for you and you for them.
Klaus looked around at the other orphans in the common room. Many were shy and withdrawn. He thanked Reverend Mother and went to let the other children know how special they were. He came to discover that many of the children loved to make things. The boys liked to build, and the girls liked to paint. Klaus asked one of the sisters if she could spare any of the scraps from the craft room. She said she was willing to trade. If the children organized the room, they could take what they needed for their projects. Klaus agreed, and the children set to work. They only had one hour a day before evening prayer to make the progress. In six days' time, the cleaning was complete, and Sister approved their work. Klaus called all the children together and asked, "What would you think of making toys for the children in the poor neighborhoods? The sisters take good care of us, but there are children close by who may not have all the things they need, even with a mother and a father." The others liked the idea. This way, they could build and paint and maybe learn to sew. They could have fun using their talents. And their trinkets could make someone else very happy. As the weather turned colder, the children found themselves inside with more time to work on their crafts. The sisters taught the girls to sew teddy bears, and the boys built toy soldiers out of wooden blocks. Those who enjoyed painting added all of the finishing touches. Before long, they had used up all of their supplies. Klaus was pleased with what he and the other children had done. Klaus asked the Reverend Mother, "How many children are there in the poor neighborhoods?" Reverend Mother asked, "Why do you wish to know?" Well, tomorrow is Saint Nicholas Day, and we thought we could deliver what we made. I just wanted to make sure we had enough. Klaus explained, "Why don't we make another visit to the craft room? You and the others can work on your projects until Christmas. Then, I believe you will have enough." The Reverend Mother said. Klaus happily thanked her, and they picked out enough supplies to make a little something for every child in the village. After all, everyone should be reminded of God's love on Christmas. On Christmas Eve. Klaus bundled up in a bright red coat, a thick white scarf, and shiny black boots. He and the others loaded all of the toys into a wagon, and off Klaus went. He walked door to door, leaving presents with little notes that said "Merry Christmas." He carefully checked his list, and then checked it again to make sure he had the right number of items at each house before he returned home. On his way back, Klaus feared he had missed someone. There were still toys in the wagon. Upon his arrival home, the sisters gave him hot chocolate and cookies. The other children ate their treats. And asked him how it went. He told them about his journey and how he had toys left over. Reverend Mother smiled. "Are you not children of the village?" She picked up the extra toys and handed them out to all the boys and girls. She saved the last teddy bear for Klaus. "Merry Christmas, children!" 
After you finish your treats, it's time for bed, the Reverend Mother said. Year after year, Klaus and his friends continued making toys. The more they made, the more people with whom they could share God's love at Christmas. Today, he continues to bring God's love to all the good little children of the world. The End Now children, the little boy in that story was me a long time ago. See, it is very important to choose good role models. There are none better than the saint and our Lord himself. He was a child just like you. He came to be like us, to love us, and to save us. And that is cause for celebration. Hello, children. House. Have you started your visits early? I have. It is good for children to have reminders of God's love for them. I agree. However, the children must make room in their hearts to receive God's love, just as much as they make room in their homes for their dolls and games. Why, children are made to know, love, and serve God. How much preparation could there be? An entire liturgical season. You know better than anyone, there are many demands on their time and attention. Advent is a time for pulling back and quieting down. Yes, a time to remember the days before our Savior had come, and the days of Isaiah and God's promises. In the season of giving, it is important to remember to give to the Lord our hearts. All of our joys and sorrows, our confidence and fears, are everything. If we let go of the things getting in the way of, our, of the love of our Lord, we will make loving others effortless. And loving our Lord and loving others is the best gift of all. Come, children, how may I pray for you today? Be brave. Saint Nick was very brave and thought of God's love when he was in prison for his faith. Know your faith. Saint Nick helped form our faith and root out heresy at the Council of Nicaea. Be generous. Saint Nick gave his money to a poor family to help them through tough times. Be kind. Saint Nick rescued children from an evil man who sought to do them harm.
Be a helper. Saint Nick prayed, and God calmed the storm at sea. The sailors made it home safely. Saint Nick, pray for us. Have a fruitful advent and a very merry Christmas.